take two. Fingers cross, everybody cross fingers. Okay, you send me a request, Robin, just in case it's like weird that way. You send it to me and I'll accept your request. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, let's see. Cross our fingers. Do you hear me? <sighs> okay, I'll send you a request. We're going to do this, I swear. <laughs> I swear. Okay, pop out, pop back in, baby. <laughs> we're going to do it. <laughs> we're getting this. And, and we're dancing until we do. Sorry. That's how that works. Sound? I hear you. <gasps> yes! Oh, smooth victory, baby. Smooth. So, I was telling everybody that I found us a song called The Key. Because you know what? Today, we are going to talk about the key to losing all the weight to keto. And, and Robin knows it. She was commenting about it on her group the other day, and it's a it's like super, super awesome, guys. If you've ever heard of these things called keto sticks, you could just pee on these, right? Sorry. My other device was going crazy. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, you do your thing. I'll chit-chat while you share. Share to my group, too, if you don't mind, please, darling. So, I don't know if you guys have heard of these things before. They're keto sticks. And, and if you guys get these, and if you pee on them, and if it says you're in ketosis, you're, like, totally guaranteed to lose weight. I don't know if you know it, but it's, like, a law. I don't know if you've heard it before or not, but if you're in ketosis, you're definitely guaranteed to lose weight. Now, I want to tell you my least favorite thing about these pee sticks, because obviously Dory got roped in. I have a bottle to show you. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bottle to show you, but I'm going to show you guys something else interesting too. Now, when I first bought these and I was using them to see if I was in ketosis because I was new to keto and I didn't really know what keto was, I tested somewhere in this super purple, not quite darkest purple range, okay? And I didn't know anything about keto. I was not doing keto right. I can tell you right now, yeah, I might have been peeing out really, really lot of ketones. Really, really lot. But right before we started this, I ran downstairs and I peed. I haven't used one of these in over a year. But I'm going to show you guys something. So Dory, who's been keto for a year and a half, and I guarantee you I am in ketosis, girl. I know it. I can tell by my body. Look at I test in the barely range. In the barely range. So can you explain that to me, Robin? Because I... I It's all good. Um, we're staying, um, we're visiting my daughter and my, my dad to New Orleans tomorrow. So we're in Louisiana and there's a lot of people in the house, a really small house. I'm like, where am I going to go? And so, yeah, I'm in my truck. <laughs> we love it. Heat, heat index, you're wearing a sweater. The heat index here is 110 today. Oh. Um, It was cold here today. Everybody's like, Dory, you're wearing a sweater. I'm like, girl, it's cold here. It's cold again. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Not I jealous. Know. Well, duh. 
pee stick says. I, well, yeah, and I think some magazine covers say that too. Ketones, y'all, are a byproduct of fat burning. Having ketones, which we want you to be in ketosis, we want you to be producing ketones. Having ketones does not guarantee weight loss. It has, I was like, nothing to do with it, but it's the opposite. If you have ketones, it doesn't necessarily mean you're losing weight. If you are burning fat for fuel, your liver will make and produce ketones that you will use. So it's kind of the opposite. Um, people think, well, I'm peeing out ketones, why am I losing weight? It's, that's not the way it works. Drinking ketones or taking pills. I bought ketones before I knew what keto was because on the shelf it said these, if you take these ketone capsules or drink this stuff, you'll be in ketosis. And lo and behold, I peed out a stick and it turned color. Woo! Yay! So what I'm doing was not losing weight. I was drinking them or taking these capsules and then I was peeing them out and I stole this from Dr. Ken he said if somebody comes into my clinic it says um, they they want me to get them pregnant haha <laughs> um, he can inject them with an HCG hormone um, and in a few minutes or an hour whatever it is they'll go in the bathroom and they can pee on a stick and it will say that they're pregnant are they really pregnant no same thing as with being in ketosis. If you drink the stuff and pee them out, it doesn't mean, it doesn't put you in ketosis. You need to do that yourself. Okay, so yes. the B6. When you first start, I think if you need a motivator, you want to know if you're doing things right. I don't think the pee sticks are a bad thing because they're cheap. You get like a hundred of them for ten yeah. bucks. Yeah, um, you do. Well, mine are 50, but you can cut them down the middle too. I have a girlfriend who uses them and she cuts them down the middle so that you can use them longer. Well, in the States, they're like 10 bucks. Sorry, mm -hmm. Canadians always got to pay like 10 times more for everything. I know! <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know what? If you're in Canada, don't buy pee sticks because you don't need them. Right. So you do keto for a week. You pee on a stick and it turns a color. Really, guys, that's a great motivator. Yeah. And what that means is that you have depleted your body of carbs and sugar enough so that your liver is starting to um, produce ketones because you need something to replace that with. Yes. So you see, I'm, that's great. It does not mean you're fat adapted, and that's your ultimate goal. Because if you are drinking them and peeing them out, the stick's going to turn colors, which is good. It means you're producing them. That's step one. But you're not using them yet. Yes. You're just getting started. That's great. It's step one. Once you've become fat adapted, throw those pee sticks away. And I use mine as um, an experiment. When people say, you know, my stick's not turning color anymore. You've been keto a year and a half. You know you're fat adapted. I've yeah. been keto over three and a half years. I know I'm fat adapted. No yeah, I know it. When I, when I pee on the stick, it is negative. There's not even a slight color. And I'll do this now. I don't do it live peeing on the stick. Y'all don't need to see that. That's but weird. I'll, I'll do the stick. And then as soon as I'm done, I will go, I'll wash my hands, I'll prick my finger, and my blood ketones will be whatever they are. You know, 0 0.8, 1.2, 5, whatever they are. So there's ketones in my bloodstream. I am using them now. I'm not peeing them out. And that's ultimately what you want to do. But you have to go through step one first. Yes. So if you just, you know, and your stick's turning color, don't get upset. Because you're not that adapted. You're not going to be yet. That probably no. takes months. So. Well, that's... now, here's the thing that I want to point out to you, though, because I panicked. I panicked, Robin, because I was here, and, and look how good I was at ketosis. If this was like a test, I'd be like A in ketosis. Dory got an A. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I got up and I peed on my stick, and I was barely, barely registering. And then I was like, oh my God, I did something wrong, but I didn't do anything different. I didn't do anything different. So... And is that because I'm burning them now instead of just peeing them? It's because you're using them. And yes. that's what you want to do. The majority of the people in the world will never produce ketones because they're never going to get their carbs low enough to do that. So when you first start producing ketones, your body don't know what to do.
to do it. Doesn't know how to use them, um, and it hasn't been long enough. You still have some, you know, some reserves in there. But once you start burning the fat, you will eventually start registering zero. You're using those ketones to replace the carbs and sugar that you, you no longer have. Now, every part of your body can use uh, can use fat for fuel, except your brain. Okay, fat does not have the ability to cross the blood brain barrier. So, if you're going to be keto and burn fat for fuel, and your body didn't produce ketones, you'd be like there's no dead. fuel. Um, yeah, the function. The majority of the energy that all that all of us in our brains. Believe it or not, even if we're having those off days, still, your brain is still using more energy than any other part of your body. It can only run on two things. Glucose and ketones. So, in the beginning, when you first start, you're getting some ketone, you're getting some ketone readings. People, in this maybe people call it part of the keto flu. Maybe you're feeling like in a fog. You're not, you know, where's that mental clarity everybody talks about? That's not going to come until after your body starts using those ketones yes. because the fat cannot get to your brain, but the ketones can. Give it time. My suggestion always is if you're going to start keto, don't start it two days before you have a big work assignment to do. Oh, no. It's about to be on. Okay, give yourself a few weeks, please. Get those ketones going. Um, yes. Because there's probably going to be a period of time where – you're walking around going, I don't know, I, what, I don't even know what my name is. What? Uh, what? what? <laughs> you know? um, it's okay. I, I okay, do that. stuff. I, at first I have the coffee, then I do the things. But yes, plan. Um, but not to an extreme either. I had a girlfriend who messaged me, and it's funny, because we've kind of talked off and on for a few months about keto, and as often as people don't know they just have some misconceptions so she said this to me okay Dory so I figured out my problem with the going keto and and I need a solution so I need to be able to schedule two weeks for this keto flu thing so I I just need to figure out some time in my life when I can be sick for two whole weeks and I just don't know when that is Dory because I'm really busy but I really want to do this keto thing and I was like you know you don't have to get the keto flu right? I didn't get the keto flu. Lots of people don't get the keto flu. And she's like, what? I don't have to pencil in two whole weeks to be sick. But the, the physical symptoms, honestly, I didn't get the physical symptoms either. Not that I remember anyway. So if I did, it couldn't have been that bad. The physical symptoms only last, if you get them, typically a few days. You just, you just kind of put your body into shock. Yes. And keep your electrolytes up, get your salt, um, Get your potassium, get your magnesium, drink lots of water, keep yourself hydrated, and you can really minimize those symptoms or, or keep them away. Like I said, I don't, I didn't get it, I don't think. But the mental thing, you may have a week or so where you're like, where's that mental clarity? Foggy. Because you might have to switch over to more than that ketones. So now here's a thought too that I had. Because some people say to me they got the keto flu. Some people got it really bad. Now, the only correlation, and again, this is not scientific. This is just from feedback that I've got. Um, for me, the people that I talked to who got the keto flu really bad, they all had one thing in common. They binged out really bad before they started. So instead of spending a couple of days slowing down your carbs and easing in, they did the opposite, opposite and they carb binged and they sugar binged and they did what we used to always do before we started a diet where you're like, okay, I'm never going to have this. And you order all of the things and you sit down and you have pizza and you have fried chicken and you have ice cream and you've got chocolate bars and your chips and you know, you, you have all of the things and you spend a whole week eating all of the things. Those are usually the people who come to me and say, Dory, I'm so sick. I am so, so sick. So I think the best way to avoid is to spend that week prior to slowly easing out. Cut your sugars, cut your carbs, and then you, you're you not shocking your body as much. I agree 100%. And, and that, why we do that, it's just something that we do, uh, you know, I, I, used I to know. Do. 
people look at like, I will never, ever be able to have this again, so I'm going to eat it all right now. Um, yes. Not going to help you. I mean, but, either way, you're going to eventually get over it, but um, save yourself some pain. But, <laughs> but it's my last cake, Robin. I need to eat the whole thing, though. The whole thing. Or, or people say, I'm going to start once the junk in my house is gone. Y'all, yes. give it away. Um, or give it away, throw it away. If it's unopened, give it to a food pantry. Except the vegetable oils. Don't give that to anybody. I mean, no, anybody. give that to the garbage. Uh, please, please don't give don't that care. to anybody. You know, we're not getting rid of those things. Um, so, so yeah. And now, um, you know, I do want to bring. Since we're talking about ketones, I get this a lot, and then I'm sure you do too. And it's a common theme. People will say, let's say they're testing their blood. First of all, do you have to test? No, you never no. have to. I only t I have a blood meter. I test when I'm doing experiments. I always do like little n equals one experiments, you know, where I'm the only subject. Let's let's see what happens, and I'll chart my ketone numbers. What am I ever gonna do with this information? I don't know. I love but, you. Um, anyway, so um, that's what I'll. And you know, some people test every day, um, or more than once a day. And I'll get the questions, as I'm sure you do. How do I get my numbers higher? I'm only at 0.7 or 0.5 or, or I'm only, I've heard people say I'm only at 1.3. Okay. You're either producing ketones or you're not. End of story. Yeah, like pregnant um, or not. Right. right. Some people, exactly. Some people will say that, and I've seen this many places, I'm sure you have as well, that nutritional ketosis, whatever that means, the optimal number to um, losing weight or something is between 0.5 and 1.5 or whatever that number is. <sighs> I, I've looked everywhere. Show me where this comes from. Why, why do you say that? Um, <laughs> and I've never found anything. And I've actually tried, I've done these little experiments too. Okay. When I, I will test my, I'll prick my finger. I do experiments. I'm like scarred on my fingers because I do it so much. And I'll test through different times. And I found that the higher number of ketones that I have in blood has absolutely zero, zippo, nada, no correlation to any kind of weight loss or really how I feel. Uh, like none, zero, like not even a, a thing. Okay? So people, but people want that, they're chasing that higher number. How do I get a higher number? Number one, why do you want one? Okay, but you want one. Fine. I will show. I will tell you how to get a higher number. Eat or drink a whole bunch of fat, just fat. Wait 45 minutes, test your ketones. Your number will be higher. But so what? It doesn't change the fact that an hour before they were what they were, 10 minutes later, they're going to be something else. And tomorrow, they're going to be something totally different. So that's how to get a higher number if you want one. But okay, so no, is that really no. any different than obsessing about the scale number that bounces back and forth? Because I know for me, I never hit an even number. Like, I, I will bounce. You know, when I started, it was 180, and, and I, I was 180, 182. It wasn't even 180, 178. Like, I was losing a two pounds. I kept gaining and losing the same two pounds, 180, 182. And... I obsessed. I, I weighed myself three times weight, a day. Yeah, your weight changes, like, probably minute by minute. Um, Duh. And, you know, that, there's that graphic that I use. It's like your weight can fluctuate up to 10 pounds in a day. I don't know where it probably could fluctuate even more than that. And so if I weigh myself in the morning and, and I weigh, I don't know, whatever the number is, and then at noon I weigh two pounds more. And then in the evening, I weighed two pounds less. All I did was frustrate myself, and it didn't change the fact that I weigh what I weigh. No. Regardless of what that scale says. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's just frustrating. You just, you're raising that cortisol, <laughs> which isn't helping either. Yeah. So, I, I get the scale thing. I, I used to weigh... Well, every day. Then I went to once a week, and now I really only weigh—I don't know. I, I can't tell you the last time I weighed. I uh, bro, 
broke my scale, so I haven't weighed in a really long time. But when I got obsessed with it, I started I started doing this. I would wait until at least three people said, oh, wow, Dory, you look like you've lost at least 10 pounds. And I would wait until three people said it, and then I would hop on the scale. But you know what? More often than not, they were wrong, and I hadn't lost any weight. My body was just recompositioning. My shape was changing. I was slimming out. I was thinning down in the face. I haven't lost weight in months and months and months. But if you guys watch my videos, I, I'm literally shrinking in front of you since November, and I don't think I've lost any actual weight, maybe five pounds since November. But every day when I look at myself, I'm like, oh, look, I'm, I'm getting leaner here, I'm getting leaner here, I'm getting, you know, less and less stomach, more and more shape every single day so the scale doesn't necessarily have to move either and it's a it, it's a it's a very very bad gauge and again i get it i'm a number person i want to see that number but what the scale does to you um regardless of what you may have done a horrible thing i may have you know eaten a gallon of ice cream oh my gosh and then i punished myself by getting on the scale i did that way but oh, yes. um, I punish myself by getting on the scale and I see that I'm up two pounds. Even though you may have eaten a gallon of ice cream, you did not gain two pounds of fat from no. that ice cream. You didn't. No. You might be have some fluid retention. You might have got yes. some immediate inflammation going. You, you know, and that's going to put some weight on. It's not fat. My big thing, I have a lot of surgeries. Not because I enjoy them, but because... No. I am, I because no, they're fun. <laughs> and they're always pumping me full of garbage. And there's nothing I can do about it. So after surgeries, I always retain fluid. And one, with the, in January, I think it was really bad. I mean, I had like stretchy yoga pants that were always loose on me. I couldn't even like them. Um, it was that. So I got on the scale just so I could tell my doctor how much fluid I retained. It was like 18 pounds. Oh my God. I was oh, dead like, God. overnight. I, not even overnight, it, from, well, yeah, I guess overnight from that surgery the, the day before. Um, and of course, I was devastated. I was taking diuretics, doing all this stuff. And I know in my head, I did not gain 18 pounds of fat in, in no. just a couple weeks, but it all went away. So when you weigh yourself multiple times a day, especially, um, when, you, when you weigh yourself multiple times, especially, um, and you see that weight gain, Yo, it's not fat. I don't care what you did. Now, no if you way. do that every day for a month and you gain 10 pounds, it very well may be. But, you know, that one time mess up, don't beat yourself up. It stops stepping on that scale. Now, I have a good question for you while we're talking about water retention. Because in our old life, everybody always told us that water retention was caused by what, Robin? Salt, right? Yeah. Too much salt high salt intake. So how is the answer for water retention getting your salts and your electrolytes up? Because salt is what makes you retain water, Robin. That is what I have been told. And if you Google what makes you retain water, I haven't done it. I'm making this assumption. I'm going to Google it. Find a good, go ahead, Google it. You're going to find realize. a whole bunch of people, doctors, whatever, that tell you that you're eating too much salt. Okay. And you're also going to find a whole bunch of people who now get it and say, you don't have enough salt. Okay, It's kind of like <laughs> people with digestive uh, problems, acid reflux, all that kind of stuff. Probably more than half the people are saying you need an acid blocker because you have too much acid in your stomach. It's actually the opposite. You don't have enough acid in your stomach, um, that, which is why your food's not breaking down and digesting properly. Same thing with salt. If you're retaining fluid, you probably don't have enough salt. I know that um, from personal experience, too, and from people in the group that feel like they're, they're swelling, and I tell people to eat more salt. They're like, what, what, no, yeah. wait, I don't think... No, no, but, but it says number one answer, Robin. Let me turn this so they can see. But it, it says the number one answer is to number one. What does that say? Eat less salt. Now, number one answer to treat water retention but it says right here robin 
Google said so. Sorry. If you're retaining water, you go ahead and eat less salt and you just report back on how that works out for you. you know what? <laughs> we know how that works for you. Um, and people will say, yeah, but I'm eating a lot of salt. Are you really? Then people say, well, I salt my food. It's probably not enough. Um, I love using Soleil water. And no, I'm not selling Soleil water because you make it yourself and has two ingredients, water and salt. Okay. I use Soleil water in my cold beverages. I got some in my water here. Yeah. Um, just because it's already salt, so I'm just doing what's easier. Um, in my coffee, a pinch of salt. On, definitely on my food. In my cooking. But I'm always, always taking salt. And all I can tell you is this. I am not retaining water or puffy at this particular moment. Okay. Um, is not going to make you retain water. Okay, so yeah. I only have this in my cupboard still because now I use it for my sidewalks because I'm in Canada where it gets icy. But I want to talk a little bit about, so when they say eat less salt, are they talking about this kind of salt, Robin? Table salt, the kind of salt that we all used to eat? Or are they talking about the good pink Himalayan salt or half salt or... That. People that say eat less salt are no doubt talking about the table salt because that's what they assume everybody uses. And that I'll agree with. Eat less of that. Eat none of that. Because yeah. Like I said, it's for my sidewalks now. But we used to, this is used to be our salt. Is it going to hurt you? No. Uh, maybe a little. I don't know. But it's certainly not going to help you. It's, it probably will hurt you in the long run. It is um, bleached out salt. And you're left with a little bit of... Um, Sodium. Pink salt or any on I use pink Himalayan salt, but yeah. any find or unprocessed sea salt is gonna give you eighty four trace minimum minerals that you need. And it tastes the same. If you guys are scared, it tastes the same as salt. I mean I think it tastes a little better. It does but taste better. You, I finally trained my parents, I think, except they forget sometimes. When they get a headache. Pinch of salt. You, let them dissolve on your tongue. Guess what's going to happen to that headache? It's going to go away. Headaches, um, muscle aches, all those things, those are not, um, it's not the problem. If I have a headache, my headache is not the problem. It is a symptom of the problem. It is my body yes. saying, yo, Robin, something's going on here. I need to get your attention. Here's a headache. Do I, do I got you? Do I have your attention? So what people do is they take medicine to cover up that headache. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But you haven't fixed the problem. Headaches almost 100% of the time, almost, is a lack of sodium. Give yourself some salt. I use the rocks on my tongue. That headache, I barely, I eat so much salt, I barely get headaches at all. Uh, but like when my parents do and stuff, it will, within 10 or 15 minutes, headache is gone and you know what it's not going to put a hole in your stomach either no like the over the over the counter um medications and you need the salt it's pickle salt. juice if i start to get and that's how i know like if i get a little bit lightheaded or i'm slightly dizzy or i'm starting to get a little bit of a headache pickle juice is my favorite and my mom always said it was going to kill me because of the salt and the vinegar in it but just a little shot of pickle juice just a sip and within 10 minutes it will go and it just balances me right out you can use olive juice pickle juice it's just that quick it hits your system really really fast and then guess what I don't take all of the time anymore 12 count them 12 painkillers and or headache pills every single day I don't take so those anymore all that's doing is putting a hole in your stomach and athletes know this um, uh, I do a, a big charity event um, every year in, in Baton Rouge. Um, it's for the local wounded warriors, um, military families, Blue Star Mothers, that kind of thing. But anyway, we run the um, we do the concession stands. And they're not keto concession stands, by the way. But what are you gonna do? I'm trying to raise as much money. Yeah. And it's a competitive, it's a competitive softball tournament. I mean, these guys are dead serious. Well, we sell pickles there. Those big, you know, big deal pickles. We always save the pickle juice and we have little like Dixie cups and the players or their, you know, their people will come and we don't charge them for it, of course, will come because it's pickle juice. So I need pickle juice. 
all weekend long um, because they're getting cramps. Pickle juice is awesome for your electrolytes. Eat the pickle juice, drink the pickle juice. Yeah, live a little. And you know what? That's how I knew that keto was for me because all the things I really, to be honest, everything I love is keto. Pickles are keto. Pickle juice is keto. Bacon, pork rinds, all the things I really love. And none of the things I ate just for the sake of. Like, did you ever eat spaghetti sauce and just think, oh, why do I even have to have the noodles? Like, Mine would have a small amount of noodles and it would be like a noodle <laughs> soup, right? So why have them? I don't miss them. Well, and it's funny because I was reading something today that really just kind of hit, it really just kind of hit me and I never thought about it before. But I was reading something in, um, my glasses started today, and they were talking about your innate, um, innate, can't think of the word, listening to your to yourself and they use the example of toast okay and they said if, if you've always been the type of person where I can't eat my toast without butter I really 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 want toast but I can't eat it without butter maybe you're not really craving the toast maybe it's the butter you want if you can't eat toast without butter then maybe it's not the toast maybe it's the butter listen to that and eat the butter. Right? Like <laughs> eat the butter. Eat, eat the, the butter. butter. So I'm going to scroll and see if we have any questions on okay. Facebook before we close out. Just so I can see here. Uh, Crystal says, eat less salt. Google it. It says so. You're a hoot. I love you. I love you too, Crystal. <laughs> I love you too. I love you too. Um, Cindy says, it tastes better. And, and I agree that the pink salt tastes better. And Carol says that Powerade really helps her headaches. So that's it. It's the electrolytes. Get the electrolytes in and you're going to feel an awful lot better. I also have, <coughs> um, I don't know if I've got the sample of it, but I get um, that natural calm. And it's got the magnesium and the potassium in it together. And I got just the other day, um, my keto chow stuff came. And this one is a liquid drop. So it's got your sodium, your magnesium, your potassium, and your trace minerals. And you just add it as a little squirt to your water. So there are a lot of different ways to get that. You don't have to buy a specific product. But if you're like me and you think, you know what, how much do I need of this? How much do I need of that? Like, how much sodium is enough? How much magnesium is enough? Am I getting enough potassium? Robin, do I need more vitamin D? <laughs> Everybody needs more vitamin D. Um, yeah, everybody does. Mine, you know, I always say, you need to get this stuff. How you get it is up to you. Um, yes. My electrolytes, I do the Soleil water um, or just salt, depending on the hot or cold beverage. And I use no salt. And I think in Canada, it might be called new salt. Ha half salt. salt. Light it's salt. so weird. Half salt. They call it half salt, not new salt, half salt. Half salt. That's, that is your potassium chloride. And then um, magnesium I take in um, uh, pill form, supplement form. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, you definitely need more vitamin D too. Yeah, the vitamin D. Everybody needs that because we don't live close enough to the sun. Just saying. Unless you live in like Hawaii, then you might not need some of that. Or Australia. Australia. Um, <laughs> right? I do want to just, I always have to throw, <coughs> throw this out there with potassium because I am not a doctor. Um, like my MB got lost in the mail. But when people talk about potassium, um, you know, I say eat all the salt you want for sodium. Eat it all. Eat it all. I don't care. I mean, you'll know when you've had too much. Uh, with potassium, if you do not have normal heart rhythm, if you do not have normal kidney function, you do need to talk to your doctor about that. You still need potassium. But people throw out there all the time, you know, how much potassium should I take? And then everybody throws in their answer because they got it off of some chart. The question needs to be, I, I worry about these things, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. The question be, do you have normal heart function? Do you have yes. normal kidney function? Um, because if you're not sure, oh my gosh, talk to your doctor. Please. Yes. Please. So let's talk about that for closing. Um, I don't have anything after. So as long as you're not running short for time, I don't care if we go over a little. As long okay. as you're okay. 
Um, so let's talk about that a little bit and I want to kind of go there and say under what circumstances do you need to talk to your doctor? Because again, uh, if you've been fooled by the blue and purple hair, I am not in fact a doctor. I'm, I'm going to put that out there. I, I don't even play a doctor on the internet. <gasps> I know, gasp, right? Dory is not a doctor. So at what point do we know for sure we need to talk to our doctor or should we just all flat out and be like, hey, yo, doctor, doctor. I'm going to do the well, keto. Here's the, here's the thing. It, it, I would think that it would be um, common sense. But if it's a medical question, you should probably talk to your doctor. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. I think, though, people get very frustrated and don't want to talk to their doctors. And they think that, um, you know, because your experience with keto, you can... It, you can, and I guess we can we can help, but if it is a medical, truly a medical question, um, you need to talk to your doctor. If you're having some, you know, people will will send pictures of their rashes and say, "Is it the keto rash?" And I don't know, but people will come and answer and say, "Oh yeah, just don't worry, it'll go away." And I'm sitting there going, "You are not a dermatologist." <laughs> but what if it's not? So. You need find a doctor and um, Jessica's saying find a doctor you trust and that, yes. if you can't tell your doctor everything then you need to find another doctor um, if you're not comfortable with them then you need to find another doctor because you need to be totally comfortable whether it's a, a primary care a, a family practitioner functional medicine um, whoever that is but even but if somebody is giving you medical advice if they are not a doctor, especially if they're the, the the leader, if you will, of a group or something like that, please leave because yes, it, it, no business. It, it, but the reason people do it is because they also have no. Um, I think they're trying to be helpful, but they don't have any. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess legal obligation to tell you the right thing. You know, and and I'm not being not being a doctor, Dory. If you came to me and said, Robin here's my medical question and, and I gave you advice and you followed my bad advice it doesn't I mean I, you can't sue me it's your, yeah. your fault for listening so don't just be careful who you're listening to and if people are giving medical advice even if it happens to be the right medical advice for that particular circumstance people just should not be giving medical advice unless they're qualified to do so well, and, and we all know better than that, right? Like we all know what happens. And, and just out of an example, because I Googled, you know, water retention, what causes it, and we already looked at that, and I have that one open, uh, I want you guys to know that when you use things like, you know, Google MD, and you're trying to diagnose yourself online, that can be hella scary. Because right away it says, okay, so water retention in occurs when you have excess fluids in your body. Um, water retention can be several reasons why it happens. Um, it could be pregnancy or your period. And then it goes right into um, if you, you may have a medical condition like kidney disease or it might cause heart failure um swelling may be an underlying health issue like right away you're thrown into this huge panic and you could just a you could not be having enough salt or maybe your kidneys aren't functioning but you can't go to the internet and think that you're going to figure that out all by yourself talk to your doctor and if you have medications for sure definitely discuss with your doctor if you are diabetic and you want to change your diet and you're cutting your sugars guess what you're going to need to adjust your medications you're going to end up in the hospital because you cut your sugar and your carbs so much that you're over medicating so you really 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 want your doctor to keep an eye on you and if your doctor what? isn't keto find a different doctor i know it it's sounds easy or at least if they're not open to what you're doing um Blood, blood pressure medication is a big one, and I've seen this happen a lot with people. Um, and it's a question that I've learned to ask. People start doing keto, and their keto flu symptoms um, aren't going away.
away, they're dizzy, they're lightheaded, they're this, they're all, and that doesn't go, and it's not going away. And in the beginning, I didn't even know to ask this, but I always started asking, are you on blood pressure medication? Because once you do keto, typically, if you had high blood pressure before, it brings it down. So you don't need the blood pressure medication anymore, or you don't yes. need as much. So what I found is that people who just it, consult your doctor, don't just, I'm not telling you to stop taking it. But what I found is that people are taking their same blood pressure medication in the amount, but they don't need it. They're, they're dropping their blood pressure so much. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's keto flu. Like it, it may feel like keto flu that's not going away, but in that situation, it's because you're over medicating yourself with a medication that you don't need or don't need as much. So definitely, like you said, with the medications, um, you're probably going to need to adjust pretty quickly with the help of your doctor. Well, and depending where you're getting your information from, group to group, everyone is in their different level of how much they know. There was at a time when I wouldn't have thought of that either. When somebody messages me now or posts in group and says, I, I'm not losing weight, I'm in a stall, my first question now is, what medications are you on? Because I would go through the whole list of, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And my last question would be, oh, are you on any medications? And they'd be like, oh yeah, I'm on, I'm on thyroid medication and I'm on blood pressure medication and I'm on heartburn medication. And I'm like, oh, I, I should have started there. I should have started there. It could be all of the above, none of the above, any combination of the above. And of course, we have to ask this question, say they're in a stall how long have you been in a stall i haven't lost weight in two days yeah okay, okay. <laughs> it's, not uh, stall. Uh, it's not it's sometimes the best answer is something's going on in there you don't do anything different keep, you know as long as we determine that you're doing everything correctly keep doing what you're doing and try your best not to worry about it because all of a sudden one day it's going to go boom it's going to turn back on once whatever the problem was was fixed Awesome. So let's do our closing thought this. I, I want to ask you, Robin, how do I how do I guarantee I'm going to lose weight on keto? I know that there's a guarantee somewhere and you can give it to me, Robin. What can I do to be like a solid written stone guarantee that I will lose weight? You can you can buy my program for four hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Just kidding. I don't have a program. There's no program. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. There's no guarantee weight loss. There's just, there's no guarantees in life, period. But here's what I have found and that everybody who does keto, I'll say the right way compliantly, has found. You're going to get healthier first. Yes. You're going, if you go from eating the standard American diet and go full on keto, while you're getting healthier, you're going to most likely lose some weight. Now, I didn't for six months. I was that sick. But Me neither. You're probably going to lose some weight. But you have to be healthy enough to lose weight. So that has to happen first. Um, your body wants to get to an ideal weight. That's part of being healthy. What your ideal weight is, I don't know. I didn't know what mine was. I do now. Uh, but... Keto figured that out for me, and I realized that's where I felt better. Um, guaranteed weight loss. You know, there may be people that really don't have any weight to lose that are going to try keto and, and, and say, well, I'm not losing any weight. Well, that's because keto is not a weight loss diet. Um, it is a diet for health, overall health, well-being. If you need to lose weight, you will, and quite frankly, most of us do. Um, so... Most people start keto for weight loss. People say, don't ever start it for weight loss. I'm okay with you starting it for weight loss. Just start it. I don't care what your reason is. Just start it. I started for weight loss because I didn't know that there was actually any other benefits. Uh, but there are. You're going to start it for weight loss. You're going to stay for other reasons. If you need to lose weight, which most of us do, you will. Oncologists have started to put uh, chemo patients Oh no! Oh no! We are frozen. That even more. Oh no! 
Oh no, we are all frozen. So I guess that's our cue to sign out. We're almost at the hour. Thank you so much for your time, Robin. And, and I think, honestly, we couldn't talk about this enough because yeah. you just have to do what you do. Keep on going. And you know what? It'll happen. If it's not happening right now, it's going to happen. Just because Susie down the street lost 20 pounds in her first week, you will get there. You will get healthy and you will get there. And we'll get there together. Yes. I, I adore you, darling. We can't wait until next week. I shall see you soon. See if it'll let me pull you out. I don't know. It may or may not. It's frozen again. Goodbye, darling. Let me see if I can get us a song to dance out to. And, and this one I, I love. It's called I Got the Key because you know what we do? We, we have the key to our brand new life and we get to enjoy that every day. Have a good night, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us.